So our project, which we did with Andrew Wilson and Adrian Evans, has been to help build the resilience of displaced communities, communities that are really under stress because of they're in a conflict-affected region or they're in refugee areas and so on. And many of those communities obviously face terrible problems, but they can't cope with them as well as they should because there are so many internal divisions, tensions, suspicions, they're thrown together in a displaced context. So our project aimed to help those communities build their resilience, particularly through improving their access to their own cultural heritage from home, but wherever they really uh, missed it and wanted it. And um, so in that context, we were interested in improving their access to places that they knew back at home, but maybe just cultural events, weddings, uh, how to drink coffee, those sorts of things. Yep, absolutely. And we took a slightly different approach. We used digital heritage to recreate some of the places they, um, they missed and they valued in virtual reality using web scraping technology. We pieced together some monumental sites, but also some everyday sites such as marketplaces, which then people could be immersed in through the virtual reality. So the most important thing when we did it was we actually consulted with all of the communities, not only to make sure that they wanted to participate, they were interested in this, but also to to make sure that we were uh, giving them access to the cultural heritage that they really wanted access to, that they really missed. And so there was a consultation. Through that consultation, we got very high levels of community engagement, but also um, we could then go back, uh, create those virtual realities, reprovide it to them in cultural events, which we could organise later. Yep, so we organised uh, cultural heritage festivals, which um, celebrated the virtual reality sites but also celebrated what we'd call intangible heritage. So their music, food, dancing, stories were all celebrated in these big community events which really brought together the different communities. And so in the refugee camp, um, this uh, was in a very specific context only with Syrian refugees, but in those contexts they could learn the differences of heritage across Syrian uh, communities and uh, strike up relationships uh, that had previously not existed, but also not only across the community, but also within families. One of the challenges in, if you're in, stuck in a refugee camp is that teenagers and children can lose touch with their heritage and elders can lose touch with their roles because nobody's, you know, they, don't, they lose roles if they're just stuck in a refugee camp. The participants told us that kids, for instance, would get really excited by the heritage through the virtual reality, go home and they'd talk to their parents and their grandparents about heritage from back home. And this would also empower the, the parents and the grandparents and create those um, stronger intergenerational links. We judged afterwards um, that actually we'd had a a very big impact on the cultural cohesion within the communities. All sorts of friendships and cross-community uh, links were developed at all sort of age groups, different women's groups and male groups. And so what that did, uh, following up later, is it actually increased the extent to which the communities could work together to solve their collective problems, both within the camp but also in the township. Yep, and we saw those links on the ground at all ages, whether it was talking to the women who talked about the bonds they'd created through the cultural heritage events and sharing their recipes and stories, or seeing the teenagers in the town sharing their dancing styles and creating new fusion dancing um, together. And it was a very important part of our project that we worked really closely with all stakeholders. So we were working with a big humanitarian organization, Mercy Corps, and lots of local organizations, including lots of local, uh, some local women's organizations and cultural groups. Uh, we were not only responding uh, to uh, real needs, but also that there was some sustainability in this. And in that context, we're very pleased that the UNHCR, the uh, UN uh, agency that deals with refugees and others were extremely interested in the experience and our approach. And we're now hoping uh, to be able to uh, spread the, the different areas in which we do this to other countries where you could um, help with displaced and conflict affected communities. Absolutely. And thinking about the value it can have here as well. So bringing this back to Bradford, West Yorkshire and the UK.